Hiya. Right, I'm going to try and make up for the sound lossage in one of the recent videos where I was showing how I split these into the monoprint element into two plates, creating what I'm calling tentatively a bi a biprint. So what you're looking at at the moment are two versions of the um, same drawing, line drawing, and they're from the Stiper Stones. And what I'm going to do now in with each of them is show you how I turn it into a biplate, which ostensibly is just coating some areas with a binder layer. The painting's all done, they're ready to go. I've just got one more layer to put on, and then I'll take a print from them. Uh, but I won't cover the whole area. I'll just cover a very specific area. So... What I'm probably, because obviously this expands the image in a horizontal manner. So I think what I'm going to do is sort of follow a line across there in the centre on that one. And on this one, not so obvious. I might just go with the centre of it the very centre but I'm going to use white, uh, titanium white uh, because it's it's naturally given titanium uh, uh, white acrylic generally speaking it's a, it's a mixing it's a mixing paint it's designed for mixing down with other colours so uh, it's good at binding it does its binding job well so here we go we'll find out so I'm going to play it down through there now I don't want too much on there heavy canton paper that I usually use. Right, there we go. On it goes. That was quite a fair amount of paint, so I'm going to transmit a bit of heat. I'm going to dry that down off a little bit more while I uh, work on this one. I said I was going to go for a square in the middle, didn't I? That's what I seem to recall doing, which is not going to be any mean feat at all. With, uh, I think we'll do something like that. There we go. That does gently to begin with. Obviously it doesn't matter too much if it's not a spot on square and the same paper and I'm just going to print that on there like that there we go and transfer a bit of heat and that's basically it so in a minute what should happen is that when I pull these away a residual image will remain of the composition with this one, the exterior, where I haven't put the binder, and with this one, what's either side of the binder diagonal that I put across the centre of the composition. Put that one up there for a minute. So that's that's all that was missing from, from the video the other day, that a few people felt um, the sound... I didn't switch the light back on, I apologise about that and it, it, I think I think a lot of people think it was a lot more crucial than it actually was but that, that's all that's really happened is that I've um, I'm going to leave that a little bit longer I'll give that a bit of a rub Okay, 
matter. All that's come out of that is that, which actually isn't that big a deal. I can see the boundaries, but I'm going to leave that a bit longer because I think that one will work a little bit better. And what it's left me with is quite a large residual image. That's not a big problem. Uh, I am considering though that I might just do the whole process again. Yes, I think I will. Not much has been lost. Uh. That's probably because I put on too much, too little. a light blow, powder blow I think this one's called. Maybe come a little further down here. A little bit more paint on. Stand by a bit of paper. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, I'm going to put that one to dry. Have a look at the one that, uh, the other one that I did. goes that way up and now what I'm left with so there we go there's one image and I will have to find where the boundary is as a, as a register but that's not a problem I've got markers just about where I need it and then I'm left with this image like this right so the reason that I did that with taking out the middle of it is because there was so much when I did the uh, transposing of the line drawing onto it originally which is the the fundamental layer that is all all the other layers are put on top of I noticed that there was a lot of residual um, paint grey and so obviously it's darkened that blue so what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to go in with um, a pale violet and when they merge together it'll be uh, it'll be quite interesting because obviously the pale violet and the blue are going to be indicating the same thing, which is sky. And that pale violet will play in a bit in the background. Uh, all the um, supporting colours of the what's left as this residual image. So. There we go. So again, it's a form of binder layer. Just going to treat it as another print, and then I'll, you'll be able to. With the other videos that I've posted, you can see how I turn a by print into a into a penetrate, or and this is why I tentatively call them a penetrate because, as you can see, it doesn't just work with portraits; it works with any kind of flat visual plane probably more than that but okay so i'm going to put that to go in a bit but i'm going to have a look at this one see if i can get a bit more magic out of this one or whether it did go too far okay it's still a bit wet so i'm going to switch the mic off i promise to switch it back on
we go, back with sound. Okay, let's see what this is going to do. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's much better. That's much more what I was after. Oh, yes. Right, so as you can see, it's pulled away quite a bit this time. And it pays off, I think, that lighter blue. That contrast will pay off in a minute because again I'm going to use a different colour on this to uh, bind the two plates down uh, when I move on to putting them uh, into well, reconfiguring them and reassembling them as a single image. I might use a bit of that. It's possible. I'm just going to grab a bit of paper. This one, right. So it's a question of what colour, and I think, I think, I think, I don't know about that pale violet for that one. I don't know about. Mm. What have we got up here? Buff titanium. That's the smaller one there at the moment. Just doing the companion piece for that one. Or it's twin. Whatever it is, it's negative. Do like maple shell, it's a great colour. Right. That's gonna need a dry. Tell you what, we'll abandon that one. So, you get some idea. Those are going to fit together like that. So, in between the, the, yeah, you'll get details of the rocks. And in between those details, it's going to be all uh, yellow. So, it's a bit like a sunrise. And then, mid-afternoon there's something about time shifting going on in these images definitely it's a contingent factor of them I will glue that down there we go it's going to stick anyway right let's have a look at that other one I'm going to move that out of the way and put that one up to dry I mean that's going to take a, a little bit that is let's have a look at this one Okay, I'm going to switch the mic off a minute to see if I can get that, this one to dry.
Okay. I think we're going to be good to go. So, so. So far, so good. Excellent. That went really well. So. There you go. There are the correlating images. And obviously the boundary is now bound within that pale violet. Uh, they're actually that way up both of So, yeah, there you go. That will, and that's obviously going to expand to double its length. Um, and if you look at the uh, earlier gel plate by printing to panatrates, you can see how I turn them. These won't be panatrates because obviously they're not portraits, but it's, uh, I don't know, another way of describing the panorama of the landscape, yeah. And this way it uh, comprises of two images. So it opens you up to all sorts of uh, polarisation of the image. Okay, so that's those two. That went really well. So you can see how it works there. I think the colour bit demonstrates the case quite well on that. That's, I'll be honest, that's the first time I've done that. Right, I'm probably going to need to switch the hairdryer on again, but this is a nice short one. Apologies about this, it does keep it short. So there's that one. And there's its corresponding piece that goes over the top. So that'll be quite interesting because that's almost floating without that. That's got a very ethereal feel and that should ground it as it gets consigned within the framework. Again, if you want to see how I do that, I don't want to extend this video out. They need to dry for a little bit anyway of their own accord. Thanks a lot for watching. If you can give us a subscribe and a like, uh, if, you, if it's of use to you and you feel like donating, um, I'm going to be doing a, a, what do they call it, a FaceTime video or whatever where I speak to the camera in person so you actually get to see my face straight on for once. Uh, sometime this week uh, explaining uh, how you can do that later because that would be great okay thanks a lot if you yeah like and subscribe as applicable thanks again Ta -ra.